Okay. This is just going to be a um, short video about uh, in trigonometry, using trigonometry, um, but we're going to focus on the idea of angles of elevation and depression. Now, so far, we've just been looking at very sort of abstract pictures of just a right angle triangle working out the lengths. But trigonometry is a real practical skill used by a lot of people um, out, out there in the real world, uh, architects, engineers, um, surveyors, all sorts of jobs like that involve an appreciation and use of, of, of trigonometry. Okay? And terms that people in those jobs will, will use are angles of elevation uh, and depression. So, here we have a picture. There is a, a, a person. Um, male or female, um, and there is a tree, and there is a little blackbird um, at the top of the tree. Okay, and you can see that if I were to draw a line down like that, then I would have a right angled triangle there. So you can see the connection with trigonometry here. Okay. Angles of elevation. Well, angle of elevation is this angle here. So this is the angle of elevation, is the, is, the, is the angle which the man has to look up to see the bird. So it's the angle with the horizontal. Looking in that direction would be an angle of elevation of zero. In that direction would be an angle of elevation of 90 degrees. And that angle there is the angle of elevation. Just the angle you need to look up from the horizontal. Meanwhile, the bird is looking down at the person. And they are having to look down and the angle of depression is the angle with the horizontal that not look up, but the amount, the, the angle, the amount they need to look down. Again, it's the angle with the horizontal. So that angle there is the angle of depression. Okay. Now both of these lines here, these dashed lines, they're both horizontal lines. So they are parallel lines. So what can you tell me, knowing that these are parallel lines, what can you tell me about these two angles here? Well, here we've got a letter z and this should be with this should be ringing bells with you if we have two parallel lines crossing then the alternate angles are equal okay that's something we have done alternate angles are equal so the angle of elevation equals the angle of depression. To be slightly more sort of um, thorough about this, we could say the angle of depression of A from B, of A from B, angle of depression of A from B is equal to the angle of elevation of B measured from A. And that's uh, just an observation. You don't need to use that very much, but it, you should understand, have an appreciation of that. So those are angles of elevation and depression. So let's have a look at, uh, first of all, this quite straightforward example. That's point B there. So, we've got a, a tower here, stripped down, but it's a tower. And we are asked to find, first of all, the height of the tower. So, as I've done in previous problems, I simplify my diagram for each part of the question, just including the bits I need for each part. Now, I'm going to call the height of the tower, let's call it H for 
height. I'm not calling it a capital H, you might start to get confused with hypotenuse there. Little h is a, is a letter we often use for height. So let's draw this left-hand triangle here. So we've got 27 degrees there, we've got 70 metres there, and we've got h there. So using our standard method, label the sides, opposite, adjacent, identify the trig function, so car toa, so that's going to be toa tan theta equals opposite over adjacent, tan of 27 degrees equals h over 70. Multiply both sides by 70, I get h equals 70 times tan 27. Get my calculator, check it's on degrees, press clear, 70 times tan 27, close brackets, and that gives me 35.7. So h equals 35.7, so height of tower equals 35, 35.7 meters. That's quite a tall tower. Okay. Now, the angle of elevation of the top of the tower from B. So that means the angle of elevation is the angle you need to look up from B to see the top of the tower. So that is going to be that angle there. So now let's draw the right hand triangle. But we now know that the height of the tower is 35.7 metres. We know that is 50 metres. And we want to work out the angle theta. Identify our sides. That is the opposite. That is the adjacent. Again, we're going to use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. I don't need that side, it doesn't involve the hypotenuse. So tan theta equals the opposite, which is 35.7, over the adjacent, which is 50. And to work out, I know the ratio, to work out the angle from the ratio, I need to use the inverse tan function. And I do expect to see this line written carefully like that. Not something a bit like that, but like that. And so now, only now, do I need to get the calculator. So again, check it's on degrees. Um, shift tan gives me the tan to the tan minus one fraction. 35.7 down arrow 50 close brackets, equals, and that gives me 35.5 degrees. And this is an angle, so it's degrees. Okay. So, angle of elevation. Um, from B to top of tower equals 35.5 degrees. Okay, and that is that done. Now, a more difficult uh, example. So let's get this question here. Now, I've said this is a more difficult example, and it is for the reason that we haven't got a picture we have got to draw our own picture and we should draw it neatly and carefully. It doesn't need to be scaled, I don't need to measure the angles or anything. So, a Coast Guard, so that's a person. There he is. Stands on top of a cliff 80 metres tall. So we've got 80 metres here. sees a lifeboat out at sea. There's our little lifeboat. Uh, out at sea, an angle of 28 
degree. It's an angle of depression. So he's looking down there. And an angle of depression is that which is 28 degrees. How far away is the boat from the foot of the cliff? So I've got X there. So there's my broad picture. Now, how far away from the bottom of the cliff? So there's the bottom of the cliff, there's the boat. So that's the distance we need to work out. Now, there's a couple of things I could do with the angle. I could work out this angle. I know that's 28 degrees and put the angle there. Or I can use what we discussed earlier, use alternate angles. If that's 28 degrees, there's a Z angle there. So that is 28 degrees. And that's what I'm going to do. OK. Uh, I could show you, um, I'll, I'll show you an uh, alternate way of doing this uh, when we finished. So, if that's 28 degrees, this side is opposite, this side is adjacent. So I'm going to use tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So tan of 28 degrees equals 80 over the adjacent, which is x. x is on the bottom of the fraction, so x equals 80 divided by tan 28, which equals 80 divided by tan 28 equals 150.5 metres. OK. Done. So that's one way uh, I could have done it. I'm just going to show you quickly another way. So let's just draw a simplified version of that triangle here. That was x, that was 80. Now that angle there was 28 degrees. This is a right angle, so this is 28 minus 90 degrees, which is 62 degrees. Now in this triangle, if that's my angle, this side is the adjacent, and this side is the opposite. So, again, I would use tan, but I would have tan of 62 degrees equals the opposite x over the adjacent 80. So multiplying both sides by 80, I'd get x equals 80 times tan 62. So notice there, it was 80 divided by tan 28. Here it is 80 times tan 62. Well, let's have a look at what I get there. And I get exactly the same answer, which is a relief, but it's hopefully what we would expect. So both answers tell us the boat is 150.5 metres from the bottom of the cliff. And that's how to do a problem like that. The difficult bit is drawing the diagram. Once we've drawn the diagram, then we are just using the same old skills of trigonometry.